Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go pray. Father God, we just thank you for another glorious day that you have given us to to go through, Father God. Yes, through the Spirit. Father God, we thank you for leading and guiding us throughout this day. We thank you for keeping us this day, Father God. Thank you for protecting us from hurt, harm, and danger. Father God, we thank you for keeping us in our right mind through your spirit. God, give us the mind to come and hear a word from you, Father God. To, yes, God. To study your word through your spirit, Father God. Father God, we pray for understanding. We pray for knowledge, Father God. Father God, we pray, Father God, for your spirit to reign in our body as it always has, Father God, that we, that we lend our members to your spirit, our mind to your spirit, Father God. God, we just thank you for your word. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Father God, we just thank you. Your holy son, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Exchange. <laughs> Why you think, I got a question. Why you think they exchange on the, uh, on this here? The apostle passed out. Uh, we, we grabbed from the front. Why do you think, uh, the exchange of coats is number one. <coughs> That's a question. Mm -hmm. That's a question. Why do you think number is number one? <laughs> Somebody say something. The exchange of what? The exchange of the coats. Why do you think it's number one? It's the number one. It's no number one. It's, what do you think? Because it is number one in the covenant. It symbolizes the coming up, one. It's starting up to start another covenant between the two families. It's the start, the oh, beginning yeah. of the covenant. That's why it's number one. That's why it's number one. Because it's also, it, it's the beginning of the process of the covenant. It's the starting point. Because you don't start with the blood curse. You start with the coat, the exchange of the coats. Okay. All right. The exchange of the coats. I'm going to read from the, from the, uh, the paper. It said a coat signifies identity, authority of the family, group, or tribe. It states that, that everything I am, everything I represent, now belongs to you, covenant party. All my possession and all that I am, my very self, I give to you. Man, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. So you really, you're saying that my life, my life is your life, and your life is my life. Mm -hmm. So whatever you wow. represent, I represent. Whatever I represent, you represent. So it's like, it's also, it, it also meant each man also will it also meant each man was giving his all to the other man, even his life, if it came to that. Mm. Not right there. Even his life, if it came to that. So you give giving all your being, you give giving all, whatever. It's a covenant that you're giving up your whole life for that person. You give up your whole life, your being, your whole being for that person. So that, that's it's, it's critical, man. It's like, wow, this is it's no joke. No, this covenant is no joke. So, so he took it. I'm talking about they took it. It was real important to them. Back then, it was it was I'm talking about vital, life sustaining. This this vital. This not. I'm just making a covenant with you. Just to be making a covenant with you. This my whole life, my everything, my all, my everything is is dependent on this covenant. My whole family is dependent on this cover. Mm -hmm. my whole, all my kids, my grandkids, my great grandkids, all their lives. So it's like the heads of the house is saying, I'm placing my whole generation under this cover. Man, that's a lot, man. I mean, when you just weigh it out, man, it's like, <laughs> you ain't just dealing with your house, just you. You're just, you dealing with family, you're dealing with your wife, you're dealing with your kids. It's like, man, and uh, this is the beginning, it's the beginning process of making a covenant with one, each, each, other, each other individual, each other family, each other tribe, becoming one, becoming one. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, man, it's wow. <laughs> this is the first in the beginning of the covenant that exchanging of the coats. Why the coats? Why the coats? What a uh, robe? No, they robes back then. They wore robes back then. They wore uh, mount back then. So why? And uh, they symbolize something. Mm -hmm. They symbolize identity, identity, authority, and position. Mm -hmm. So these coat didn't. Everybody didn't just wear the coats. Mm -hmm. There were certain people that wore these coats. And uh, and uh, the coat represents uh, who and what a person is. So when you see this, you see somebody in, like, in this coat. This coat told everything about this man. When you seen this coat, mm -hmm. it told him it. You, you knew automatically who he is. You knew what part of family, who family he from, what authority he carries, what he represented. This coat. It's too early to jump in. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm studying that. That's what I'm on. That's what I'm on yeah. too. And the part, the part that I was stuck with me because it's it, it's a new those three the position, character, and uh, authority. But it's a new position because yeah. they're no longer. That same person. It's a new authority yeah. and a new uh, a new um, character. So it's it's new. So like you saying, it represents it's yeah a new beginning. Yeah, yeah. it represents because you're taking on somebody else. Mm -hmm. it's it's unfamiliar territory. So you're taking on another character of another person. So you you know, you're taking on another identity of another person. So it's new. It's, like you said, mm -hmm. it's new. It's new. So go ahead. And, I'm studying the same thing too. <laughs> <laughs> and with uh, with me studying it you know, as far as the, the exchange, mm -hmm. you know, and the part that, that stuck out to me was, you know, the exchange between Jesus and man. You know, he took off his. Oh, you going? Hold on, you going too fast, man? You 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 Woo! Oh, I got a little bit of 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 a little a by regular people. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> but it was worn by kings, it was worn by prophets, it was worn, it was worn by nobles, and uh, by rich, by the rich. That was the dress of the royalty and stately rank. So people of high standards, people that was divine, uh, divine call, people that had status, and uh, that's what wore these, they wore these robes, didn't they? Mountain, no, so then anybody just wear. So I just want to uh, look at a little bit of the pro with the mountain and uh, to who wore, you know, back in the day. Mm -hmm. Go to uh, Genesis 37. Genesis 37, look at uh, verse 34. And it's like, wow. Anybody want to read that in the uh, Amplified? Do we have Amplified? Mm-hmm. 37, 34? Yeah. And Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned many days for his son. Okay. And they sent the garment to their father saying, We have found this. Examine and decide whether it is your son's tunic or not. Oh man, I wrote it down. What else? what I was I wrote it down. What it was dealing with, uh, going back to with Jacob, gave his son 
his coat. And his brother began, was jealous of his coat. And he gave it to his son. He gave it to his son out of love, to love for him. And, uh, okay. All right, no, verse, three, three, verse three. Verse three. three. Yeah. Now, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Mm -hmm. And he made him a coat of many colors. Now, he didn't make the other son a coat. He just made one son a coat. He said now, then it says, and when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. This coat stood out. This coat represented the love of the father, of the son. Why he didn't, you know, you can see the, the brother's balance. Why he didn't make us a coat? He don't love us. He don't love us. So why he, you know, he made Joseph this coat. Mm -hmm. And this coat, you know, some say it stands for uh, divine favor, uh, the love of the father. And it represents the love of the father that he had for his son. But the other uh, kids didn't have coats. Only mm -hmm. Joseph had coats. And if, when he, every time you see him in his coat, you know his father loved him. Because that's why his father made the coat. Because mm -hmm. he loved his son. Because he had him in his old age. So, so when you see him Joseph with this coat on, you know that's what it stood for. Love. The father's love. And uh, so, man, it's to have no, the coat, the, the coat represents something back then. You just didn't have a coat on just to be having a coat on. And they, they represented something. Mm -hmm. Go to uh, 1 Samuel 15. Yeah, okay, let me say, usually when you are in a family and you, you're the, like the firstborn, I, I, I don't, I kind of know the story, but the firstborn usually is the one that's chosen, uh, quote, unquote, by right, you know, the favorite, mm -hmm. favorite one. So, for instance, my family, I'm the oldest girl. So all the the, the uh, responsibility of, of the my parents, uh, my life insurance and stuff is in my name. And um, so my family got a little issue with that. So I said I don't want it because you know, it's a it's a responsibility come with my name being on uh, on their life insurance. Okay, mm -hmm. it's loaning money, borrowing money against it, whatever. They have to come to me. Yeah. I'm the rider. Yeah. That's what they call me, the rider. So anything has to come, has to come through me. And they don't like it. And they want to know why was I picked. And so, um, you know, I thought that was, it seemed like he's the baby, right? So he, he's the last child. Is that what you're Next saying? Next child. Next child. Okay. Okay. So, you know, so they, they probably thinking of why. You know, why did you pick her? Well, the, my mom always said Dana is the most responsible one. Even back then when they did it, they chose me because they said that I was the most more responsible one. So, you know, they, it, it, it brings on that type of jealousy. And I probably, I probably wouldn't care. I don't, I don't really care. You know, if they was to change it today, uh, although they have to contact me, that it's going to be changed. But if they was to change it today, I would be fine with that. But that that comes with a that comes with a responsibility. Anybody else? So we go back. We go into First Samuel chapter fifteen, verse twenty-one. Verse twenty-one. Yeah. First Samuel chapter fifteen, verse twenty-one. Okay. And Samuel turned about to go away. He laid hold upon the, the skirt of his mantle, and and he read. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord have rent, rent the kingdom of Israel from this day, and have given it to a neighbor of thine, that it that that is better than thou. He's talking about Saul. He's talking about Saul. And uh, what I get what I get from that when Samuel rented the uh, the robe, the mountain that he had on, it represented. King, it, that, when he, this represents a kingdom, the robe. So when you see Saul in his robe, you know he was the king. 
He represented the king. The king. So the, so the rending of the road was the God tearing the, uh, taking the king away from him. So when he tore his robe, uh, his mantle, it showed that the kingdom would be torn from him. And uh, so it represented kingdom. So if you had this robe on, this robe on that he had on, it represented the kingdom of God. So to have that robe on, can't anybody just wear that robe. Only Saul could wear that robe. Only his kids could wear that robe. So it represented the kingdom. So to have that, that, that robe represent kingdom. And uh, man, it, it's, it's, go to, go to uh, 1 Samuel 18. We see how important the robe is. Wayne of the robe. Wayne of the mountain. You see how important it is because they just couldn't put on anything. They had certain kind of clothes to put on. Certain kind of, they had certain stuff to put on because they represented something. Mm -hmm. And uh, go to uh, your first time, you look at 18, look at 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. First Samuel 18, 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. <laughs> and Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Mm -hmm. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garment, even his sword, and his and to his bow and to his girt, girdle. When Jonathan did this, he was transferring the kingdom to David. They didn't know that though. They didn't know that at the time. It was a transferring of the kingdom. That robe, when he gave that robe and all this stuff that he had on, mm -hmm. it represented the kingdom of Saul, the kingdom of God. So when he gave all this to David, it was signifying that David was going to inherit this kingdom. Because Saul, uh, uh, Jonathan was the next in line to inherit the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But God had rented the kingdom from Saul because Samuel had tore to the, uh, the road. So um, God going to take this away from you. Now, it's a transferring now with, uh, with Jonathan giving him the robe, giving him all his attire. It's a transferring of the kingdom through his robe, through his, what he had on. Through what they had, what, what, what they had on, represented something. So he just, you just can't put on anything being the king's son, mm -hmm. because what I had on represent the kingdom. So what I give you represent the kingdom. So what he gave John, what he gave David represented the kingdom, which word was the transferring of the kingdom to David. And we, that new, that new position, yeah. new character, new authority. Yeah. So man, it, it, man, it's like wow. So it, it's like man, it's. They took everything, like, it was real important, you know, even the clothing, you know, the, even the names and stuff. They took real, it was real important to them. So it's like, man, so we, you taking on somebody, care, you taking on somebody, you know, authority. It's like, wow, so that, that authority came, man, you, you transferring the power to somebody. Why? And what did David do in response to that? But <laughs> man, they, I don't, it's like when Jonathan gives him this stuff, what does David do with it? He had to. Because they was making a covenant between each other. Now what does Jonathan do with David's clothes? He had to put it on. Why? He had nothing else to put on because they were making a covenant between each other, so they was exchanging on the other garments. Oh, they're making a covenant between each other because he said they made a covenant. It was a covenant between each other. Now, does David have king problems yet? Not yet. Watch this. But because of an exchange, who becomes his eyes and ears in the kingdom? Jonathan. Come on now. Does Jonathan have enemies? Yeah. Yeah. 
And nowhere in the scripture does it say he's a warrior, he's a fighter. Right. Right. No. But what is he what is he parading around town in? In day clothes. Which should, would indicate what? He's a warrior. Don't no, which would indicate he's in covenant with somebody. Yeah. 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 And so to fight Jonathan would now mean yeah. Yeah. to fight yeah. David. Yeah. You know what David could do. So we ain't gonna bother him. <laughs> and whatever I think of David, yeah. if he's walking around in Jonathan's clothes, this dude has connections all the way up to the king. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Whatever I would say or think about him. See, the fool with David would be synonymous to fool with the kingdom. Yeah. So I'm gonna go and let him make it. Cause see, to what Jonathan stuff. Now David ain't over the whole army, but Jonathan was. Yeah. So now, yeah, that, so, yeah, I, there's a, a bigger picture that you're painting, mm -hmm. but covenant also takes care of everyday dealings, too. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not in covenant because of what's going to happen in heaven. We are in a covenant because we need something to happen in this earth. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Keep going. So it's wow. It's like, wow. So, but it's, it's, <laughs> but it's like, it's crazy. It's like, man. You take it on everything. It's like, man. go to uh, 2 Samuel 13. Yeah, before you go, I, I know the pastor was talking about how you go and pick, uh, well, I don't know if he said word for word, but like you go get somebody that you know, since I ain't no fighter, I'm going to go get a fighter to be in covenant with. You know, so they'll say, you know, I remember. They, they, that family right there, they, they like to fight, you know. I ain't gonna mess with them, you know. But I can do, I'm good with money. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna help you with your finances. So, you know, they, everybody knew what, pe what people represented when they were in covenant with each other. So, like you say, they, they, knew, they, they knew what, when he took that, his, his outfit off and gave it to, to David, and he's like, oh, they ain't covenant with each other. So you wouldn't take that off. That that's a responsibility that you have. You would not give that to somebody else unless you were in you in covenant with, with somebody. And more than the benefit, why did it say Jonathan did that? Because he loved it. Well, he loved what does covenant mean? Love. Relationship. It means relationship, man. And see, above whatever else we could we could do that. What moved him to do anything was his overwhelming love for David. He loved him as his own life. And so for us to engage in covenant and we don't have relationship in mind is a waste of time. That's a pimp prostitute. We're only, we're only involved for the benefit of each other. I'm making you money. I need you to protect me in the street. Because there's certainly ain't no love and no relationship here. No. And God is not a pimp. Carry on. <laughs> Woo. Good. Right. You got to have some relationship in there somewhere. You have no relationship here. It's like going into marriage, man. How you going to marry somebody? You don't have no relationship with it. Happens every day. No relationship. How you how you gonna be because how you gonna be friends with somebody that don't have no relationship? Uh -huh. yeah. And when trouble comes, trouble should magnify the level of our yeah. covenant relationship. Amen. Mm -hmm. I have a question. So so do you have a love before the covenant or can it Love, yes, love is the uh, love is the develop in the relationship. Right. To answer your question, no. You you have the you have the love you have the relationship first. Okay. Because all that he started out with, it's too much involved to just be in a in a in a covenant with just anybody. Right. That's what, when you said that about the marriage, it made me think about okay. That people do it all the time. So I was wondering when people enter into covenant, like you say, it shouldn't be because I'm, I'm a benefit for, from yeah, that's whatever. A partnership. Yeah, that's, a partnership. A, that's not a relationship. Yeah. And, and you already know trouble is coming. Yeah. Yeah.
that you had no real understanding of what covenant is. Yeah, that's what that is. Yeah. That's what that is. So that's what that is. knowing that Jonathan had enemies and he still entered into the covenant with him, meaning that he loved him enough to have a relationship with him. Your enemy gonna be mine. That's not, still that it didn't matter. Yeah, it don't matter. Because when you it, because the love was real. Yes. Hey man, Jonathan would have laid it down for David without a, without a hesitation, and vice versa. If that's true, see if you if you started with covenant, you guessing now. Because it's e it's easy to bail when stuff get hard. Mm -hmm. That's the easy card out. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you when you when you look at it. In a true love situation, Jonathan and David, as we're speaking, they were they weren't gonna bail on one another. And like like uh, Pastor saying, tough times are gonna come. And you and you can't just you just can't bail just cause it get tough. Amen. Because then that lets you know you never was in this thing wholeheartedly to begin with. Now that's tough. That's in a that's that's a tough statement because when you start talking about a word from God, and this is our this is a church struggle. You got to be in it from the beginning all the way to the end. Yeah. yeah. You didn't hear what I said. Yeah. <laughs> You got to be in it from the beginning all the way to the end. And what happens is business dealerships, marriages, relationship, friendship, whatever. We didn't get in right. Let me say it from the balcony. We didn't get in right. But we won't, we won't all of the God benefits, but I didn't get in it right. And so what happens is now, yeah, Jonathan does what he does because he not only loves David, but he's got to believe. Not later on. Right now. Which is what makes him do what he does. And long after Jonathan is dead, because of this, David has moved to say, I want to help, I want to bless somebody, but I, who I want to bless ain't even living no more. Yeah. But because of my love for him, yeah. is anybody in his family alive? Yeah. Yeah. Now watch this. I don't know them. I don't have no relationship with them. The only thing that will connect me to that person is that word right there in verse 3. Jonathan made a... So now watch this. David's covenant was, hey man, when I get to be king, I'm going to hook you up. Boy, we're going to live good. But he died. But my word was still out there. I'm still supposed to hook somebody up. Well, see, I told you, covenant was for eight generations. Well, I can't do it to what I want to do it to. But is anybody in his family living? Well, yeah, there's somebody living. Bring him here. Yeah. Why am I even here? Because of covenant. It don't matter that you don't understand it. It don't matter that you don't know me. It don't matter that we don't have a relationship together. The only thing that matters is you're in the same family of the one I made covenant with. And as a result, you get to reap the benefits of what covenant is. Yeah. Even though you don't know nothing about me or have no relationship with me. Now that's what's significant when you start talking about it. That don't just happen down the line. Because they were both in it from the get-go, yeah. it made a difference on the back end. Yeah. Yeah. See, we want to live like a fool our whole lives, and then somewhere on the back end, now all of a sudden, I want to cash in on all of the God benefits. It don't work like that. Right. No, I don't. And so, yeah, that's so when we're starting to make a relative point, that, that's where we got to be in God's word. See, we want to live like the devil, get all the way to the end of our life, and then all of a sudden, now, God, I, I want all of heaven's benefits. I want, I want all of heaven's benefits. When I see whether you get any or not, show don't depend on man. It's got to depend on God. Because yeah, yeah. we didn't live like nothing when we had opportunity. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Go ahead, Doug. Yes. I don't know why I'm asking this. <laughs> so, is that the same for Naomi and Ruth? Was it, is that, you know what I'm talking about? It's the same. The love. The love. She benefited from what she had. Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, because he said the same cleave that we said when Naomi said, can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about it. Can I say it? Can I say it? What do you mean? Say it. Go ahead. It's going to be out of the word of God. I don't know. You gotta catch me. Maybe mine. But uh, when they when Naomi and uh, Ruth is talking, and she tell her, "I'm not gonna leave you," she right. said nothing but death will separate us. Right. That's what I'm saying. And when that word, it's, it's cleave. It's right. the same cleave that a man and woman in marriage that a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Right. So that is within itself, knowing that marriage is that kind of covenant. Right. He so, saying, this so is what it is. Because she was in covenant with the son, she had her love. It, you know what I'm saying? The relationship built. Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? Because they both was on the same ground, Orphan and Ruth. Right. They both were in the house. They both had right. the same county. You know what I'm saying? You married to the son and you married to the son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's when Pastor said you start from the beginning, right? Right. So something, like, what made you decide you were willing, even though you tried to play it off, you was willing to walk away when Ruth said, right, right. number death yeah. can separate us. Well, she upgraded. Those were more by women. Right. Yeah. Naomi's son should have never married them. Right. That's what I was talking about. And so when these boys die, as a result of this hybrid marriage, and they left where they should have never left. Everybody was living until they left Bethlehem, which was a place of bread. Yeah. You can't leave the house of bread looking for bread. <laughs> <laughs> but she upgrades, okay. and so yeah, she didn't have it on the front end, right. which is why when these boys die, she tells them, "Y'all going on back, right?" right. And so she wants to enter into. It's the same words as a marriage, but it's not a marriage. Right. But she. It doesn't say covenant, but it's it's a relationship. I, I want to stay. Now Naomi got to accept her. Right. And so now what, 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 her, what makes it an upgrade is all of the stuff she says. I may not have been for real on the front end, but hey, at this point, hey, your people are my people. Yes. Now see, it's, it takes too long to unpack all that. Because see, yeah, the only thing that connected her to Naomi was her son. <coughs> well, when the son died, in essence, we had nothing to connect us. Which is why she told her, go back to your people because where I'm from, men dominate. Whatever property we have, whatever I own, but when I left, my husband and my sons are dead. I don't have nothing for you. So I'm basically going back homeless. So if you hang with me, you're going to be homeless. This ain't what you want. And so she, no, whatever. But because she hung with her, that's how she get in with boys. Oh, absolutely. Because God understood. It, it takes something, man, to leave your whole culture, your whole everything, to embrace somebody else's culture, their God, their people, their everything. You want all of this? In its worst view, give it to me. Well, see, when you accept it in its worst view, then God will give you something in its best view. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah, keep flying, man. Keep flying. <laughs> we didn't win it. Woo! All right, go to uh, uh, First King. First King. Still talking about the governor, the uh, transfer of the coat, the uh, exchange of the coats. First King. Look at 1919. First King. 1919. Oh, okay. So to have on the. These garments, it, it represents something. It's character, the identity, the authority, the power, the position of, of that person that you took it from. Okay. okay. Might want to read that? What, 1919? Yeah. So Elijah left there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, 
who was plowing, whose plowing was being done with 12 yoke of oxen, and he drove the 12. Elijah crossed over to him and cast his mantle upon him. That's going to form a road. Now Elijah put it on Elijah, symbolizing anointing. That mountain was anointing, divine. He was anointed by God. So to give it to Elijah, to uh, place it on him, he had a, it was a calling on his life. It was a calling on his life. Mm -hmm. so, don't know anybody as well, a mountain. Not his. But, so for him to do that, Man, <laughs> and God was instructing him to do that. And uh, it was like, man, so you just, you just can't put these garments on and, and be okay. You just, you just a regular person, ordinary person. Not this here. Go to uh, 2 Kings 2, chapter 2. And look at verse 6. We can read all that. But uh, that mountain was a, when, he, when you see that, a, a person with that mountain on, it was that he was called by God. He was anointed by God mm -hmm. to do what he was doing. So, so your, your attire represented something. With God, with man. So because when man seen you, your, your attire spoke volumes about who you were. Mm -hmm. It spoke volumes about your calling. Your purpose in life, uh, your position in life, your power in life. When people seeing you with these garments on, so you just couldn't know anybody just put them on. Especially this here, especially this here, this mountain. You had to be called by God. You had to be anointed by God to put that on. Now you dealing with God. <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's like you just. And you just can't put this on anybody. No, you know, yeah. <laughs> the church is ain't always, oh, you, oh, you a preacher. God call you. Are you sure? Are you sure God call you? Mm. And uh, we got that bad about placing people in position. And God didn't call that person. And, uh, but, man, to, but you are tired spoke by you to people, to the, uh, of who you were, you know. I think, and I, oh, go ahead. I think just we we just have to be careful about statements you make about, like you were saying, God, uh, God calls you, or you know something like that. I, I think, I, for me, I know I try to be careful with those kind of statements because the flesh. Is different from the spirit. And the flesh can get you thrown off. Especially when you're thinking, well, God told me this. Well, you have to make sure that God told you that. Because mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of things that we'll say that God told us this, a lot of times we're just saying that to convince ourselves of something that we really want to do. Mm -hmm. And that don't mean it's necessarily the word that came down from on high to us, to an individual. Mm -hmm. So to see these people in this mountain, you see Elijah. And we know Elijah Jug had to leave. And the, he didn't take the mountain with him. He had to leave it for Elijah Jug <coughs> to carry the mountain. Mm -hmm. So it was passed, it was passed on to Elijah. So when people see Elijah with it, they knew he was anointed by God. He was called by God. So your attire represented a lot. Status, I mean, position, man, power, who you re who you represented mm -hmm. with the mouth. Thank you. Okay, two things. First thing is to go back on what uh, Brother Tracy said. I think it goes both ways because the, the way it's been set up so, we as a church have to understand, you know, you gotta be careful with what God with what you're saying, God, you know, God said it, you did. But you also gotta be careful to say that God don't talk or that God is not. You know what I'm saying? It gotta be both because 
You can't give more power to the devil yeah. than you do to God and his people. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I say you're looking for sons, as I'm thinking about it, as you were talking. I was thinking about that. I'm looking for sons, but what are they supposed to do? Come and take over. Well, how am I going to take over if nobody even believes that was the, that was the problem? You know, you ain't believe who are you? You just a man. Sure is until I was called by God. That's what changed my natural and made yeah. it supernatural. Mm -hmm. So to not believe in and give an example, which is second hand right here. Okay, so uh, we had a sister who was from Africa, right? In Africa, she, her husband was in, uh, one of the ambassadors. So they had to dress with their headpieces mm -hmm. a certain way. So when the sister came over to the United States and we seen her, we just was like, oh my God, that is so beautiful. The colors, the African colors and all this, right? So she just wear it out and think nothing about it. We ended up going to um, an engagement that was an African, more African engagement, right? And so we go in, we're dressed, and they are, they're dressed in their African attire. And so as the sister opened the door and stand there, when the, when, when the women come in, the African women, they come in and they do this. And they're doing that to her. Now they get to us, they're like, hi, how are you? You know, but, but when they, I, and I noticed that, so I asked her afterward what that was. And they was, she was saying that over there, the wives, you can tell who they are, who their husbands are by the way that their headpieces are wrapped. Wow. Right? Mm. So even though the man was dead, and she was even, I think, like the third wife, but the mere fact that she had wrapped it, you know, that's the way Some she way. wore it. They knew mm -hmm. even after he was after they were divorced, after he was dead, and she in America. When they came in, they still represent. They still gave gave honor to her as being royalty over in Africa. Yeah. Ain't that something? Wow. So that's why I said that not having knowledge and understanding. They didn't say, "Well, you in the USA now, nah, sir." You know, no, nah, right. they didn't do that. They understood. Right. In order for you to wear that turban like that. That means you it's something that connects you to royalty in Africa. Yeah, whether you African, whether wherever it's at, yeah. I see you. If I'm if I'm from there, I should know you. By the way, her hair was wrapped. But we don't. It's like we the only nation don't care for nothing. That's, that's right. right. But folks, yeah. we just we don't care no kind of tradition. We just do. We just go and do what we want. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have nothing to hide. That's how they know you. <laughs> I'm talking about that man, because you look at all the other countries, man, it's like, wow, man, it's like, it blows your mind because they still hold on to those things that they held back then. But well, we don't hold on to nothing. Oh. And that's why, too, when you, when, when Pastor be talking and saying, see, this message, the way, the what, what's going across now, very few people. Because they'll say, this is not God. That is not God. Yeah. That ain't God talking to him. Who is him? Nobody until God called. Mm -hmm. So if you don't elevate and say, no, that is who that person is. That is, I know that's God talking to me. Mm -hmm. Then explain to me how I get forward. How do, look how being a hand guy. He just didn't decide one day. No, no, all these other guys, somewhere somebody believed the words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they showed what they believed by what they did. Mm -hmm. what so I'm not going to still say, no, 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 no. I don't care what you say, no. That's what, uh, um, what with the clothing, yeah, yeah. with the clothing part. Mm -hmm. You know who, you know who, 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 who? Who's who? With the head, with the head, with that body attire. Yes. So you knew a king yeah. when you seen his attire. You know he's, his, you seen his kid at king of town. Yes. Just like even with the daughters, you know, they had certain like the, mm. cause they had they was virgin. They had certain mm -hmm. attire to wear, being a, being a virgin. So when you see this virgin walking. And she has a uh, certain attire to put on. Yes. You know, and I, man, so to see it without the attire, something happened. Something happened. Either she didn't get married or something happened. That, she's, that, that make her not be a virgin again. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't wear that attire. Right. So you knew with this attire, something come with this attire. And uh, so to take on somebody else attire, to take on somebody else's role, right. you take it on everything about them. Mm -hmm. So you, you, whatever whatever came with them right. came with this attire. Right. So it, it, it ties in, you know. It's like wow. So like we was talking about earlier. So it's like you you giving your life to everything about this person. 
So he's like, man. But uh, uh, let's go. Okay, I was looking at uh. Exodus, go to Exodus 28. Exodus 28. Exodus 28, 40. And uh, we just looking at the time. Why it's so vital for uh, to uh, the transfer of the, uh, the roads because you're taking on everything about this person. Every, I mean, through the attire, it just symbolizes I'm taking on everything of you. I'm taking on your whole identity. So that's what the attire represents, my being. Everything, everything that comes with me, that's what you get. I mean, everything. So it's like Sister Rod said, with Christ, everything that comes with him, that's what we take on. Everything that came with us, came with us, Man, I don't even want to go there. But that's what we take that's what he took on. Everything that, mm -hmm. that came with with us. I mean, he didn't take when it, when God sent him when God sent him in man flesh, he took on everything about us. He took yeah. on our personality. Yeah. He took on our humanity. He took man for my he took on everything. Mm -hmm. He wrapped himself in man. In sin. In sin. So he it's like he took on everything. So it's an exchange. And so he, <laughs> so I'm gonna take on you. You gonna take on me. So it's like, man. So, but, but that's an attire. That's an attire. Jesus has an attire. We had an attire. He put it on. He put it on. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you no. Know, but there was a starting point of that covenant. When Jesus put on flesh, it was a starting point for that covenant to begin. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't shed blood right off up, up front. And we see this here, that's why exchange of the coat is, is the first thing that's up here. So Jesus had to take on flesh. He had to put on a, an attire. Just like we got to put on an attire. Mm -hmm. To get into that, into that covenant, we got to take on an attire. So Jesus put it on first. He said, but you got to put on an attire too. Hmm. So, but it's like, man, so what, what we see, what we, I'm talking about, what people see, I'm talking about, they seen Jesus in the flesh. They seen, mm -hmm. they gonna have to see, see Christ in us. They gonna have to see Christ. They gonna have to see the glory of God. And go to Exodus 20, 40. Look at verse 40. Because the priest put on the top. They put on the coat. They put on, they put on the coat. Uh, what did he say? Yeah, it is. And Aaron's son, for Aaron's son, you shall make long and sleeve tunics and belts and sashes and caps for glory and honor and beauty. I look at that glory. Man, <laughs> that beauty, that beauty represents rank, renown, attributes of God. Honor and bravery. So when you see Aaron's son with this on, it represented God. So you seen God with this attire, with this attire on. Right. When they had this on, and then only the sons of Aaron can wear this. So when you seen them wearing this, they represented God. So you see the attributes of God in this attire. So man, it's like they was they had they had authority, they had rank, they had authority. So when you seen it, you seen power mm -hmm. with these priests. So when the, when the children of Israel seen these sons on, with, with these sons having these attire on, they seen power came with that. So you just can't go up on go up to him in no any kind of way and conduct yourself in any kind of way with this man mm -hmm. because power come with him. Just like you couldn't act no any kind of way with Moses because power came with him. So and. Honor came with him. Bravery came with him. Because he had to be ready to go, <laughs> to go for God. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's like, man, so, and I looked up that glory. It said riches, abundance, dignity, reverence. It said riches, abundance. So 
when you seen them with this with this attire on, riches came with it. Mm -hmm. Abundance came with it. When we have on Christ, all that come with it. All this love the people. All of, all of, all this came with it. Reverence came with it. So abundance. And I don't think about abundance. So God said, I have a, I'm in the hills. A thousand hills. So how many cattle on, on that hill, though? On one hill. He, that was it, how many cattle he had on one hill. So abundance, man. So when we take on Christ, we got, boy, I'm talking about it's like, Putting on Christ, uh, taking on an attire. When when they did this, when they had changed the coats, they taking on everything that that person owned. Uh, it's like whatever possession they had, it was theirs. Mm -hmm. It was theirs. So what's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. It's Christ, same way. So everything that I have is yours, man. So. Hey, you have access to everything in this covenant. But this is the beginning. He said this is the beginning of the covenant. Mm -hmm. The exchange of the coats. So you taking on my dignity. You taking on my identity. This is the starting point of the covenant, y'all. This is the starting point. So you you saying I'm a, so I'm in agreement with you. I'm you and you me. We ain't shed no blood yet. So you, it's like. You had to make up, going into a cup, like Pastor said earlier. Going into the cup, you had to go in there with your mind already made up. This is what I'm going to do. Mm. Do or die. Do or die. That's yep. it. That's it. Do or die. This is what I'm, this, hey, I'm in it. I'm in it to win. Committed. Committed. I'm committed to this cup. Like marriage. If you're going into a marriage, you got to be committed to, no, to death. I ain't getting it. I ain't getting it. I ain't getting it. Just to, uh, when something some come up, I'm in the, I'm in the room. Prenups. <laughs> it's a prenup. Yeah, you gotta get a prenup, man. That's that's that's. You, that ain't really no covenant. That doom right there from the Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, man, we we taking on a whole uh, this, uh, a whole tribe. Take on another whole tribe. Attributes. A whole tribe, a whole village. Take on a whole village. Attribute. Now they do things totally different, but we making a covenant together as a village. So now I got to conform to your way, and you got to conform to my way. Mm -hmm. Because when you when they when they see you, they see that they see the men, the heads of the house, the heads of the tribe wearing these robes, because they wear different robes now. So my tribe may be over here. His tribe's over here. But when people see him, this tribe see this head wearing this robe of this tribe. So it's like, man, so you taking on the whole, that whole tribe and took on this character of this tribe. So when people see you, no, not over here because the head huncho got on this here. So he represents something. So who tribe do he represent if, if I'm not familiar with the tribe? So I got to find out what tribe he represents. So it's like, man, your, your, the attire back then is, was very vital for those that were making covenant. Yeah. So it's like, uh, like Pastor said, you don't develop love, you don't have love for a person for right there. Love at first sight. Come on. It's relationship. So they had to get familiar with one another. Mm -hmm. They had to know what was going their ins and out before they go out. You're just not going to make a covenant with somebody. You don't know their ins and out. So they had to get familiar. The tribes had to get familiar. The families had to get, to get familiar with one another before they made a covenant. Mm -hmm. So Jesus had to get familiar with us to make a covenant with us. So we got to get familiar with him to go into a covenant with him. So we got to take on him. So we got to learn. We got to learn. We got to get in a relationship with him, and to go to go into the covenant. Mm -hmm. We got to get in a relationship. We don't get in a relationship with him. We we don't. I don't know nothing about you. How can I make a covenant with him? I don't know nothing about. Him. Mm -hmm. But he knew everything about me, though. Right. <clears throat> we got to have both sides, both sides, because it was the exchanging of 
of the coach. It wasn't just one giving to the coach. It was another coach getting, being passed to. Absolutely. So it's an exchange. So are you willing to give your coat up, though? That's the question. <laughs> That's the question. <clears throat> are we willing for a relationship? Oh, that's true. Because every person we're talking about, whoever we're involved with now, that was a day you didn't know them. Yeah. But you had to make a decision, whatever it takes. Yeah. I'm going to find out everything I need to know about her, everything I need to know about him. Mm -hmm. Whether that's direct, whether that's through a friend, mm -hmm. whether that's through a teacher, whether that's through whoever. Mm -hmm. But you had to make that decision. And then you had to put the effort in. Yeah. Right. Sometimes it was easy. Sometimes it was extremely challenging. Right. Well, do I press or quit depending on how interested you were? Yeah. 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 yeah if I'm as interested as I say I am, yeah. it's just as you said no two or three times, that's no for you. It's yes, to, it's yes for me. Yeah. Yeah. And if we're persistent, mm -hmm. we find out what we need to find out. Yeah. These, uh, <laughs> so we see how important the, the garments are, like how, they, how important they were back then. So it's, it's more important now, divine changing up garments. It's more important now because our lives at stake. It was they, their lives at stake back then, but our soul is at stake now. So we we hey, So it's like how important your soul is to you. So it's like, so we have to. That's that's the first step in in the, in the cup, the exchanging of the, of the garments. Mm -hmm. We have to change garments. Uh, we can't keep. We can't uh, uh, want Jesus' garment and keep our garment too. Mm -hmm. How can you do that? You got two outer garments on. Some some garments you can't have two outer garments on. One of them is an inner garment. Because you you take a, uh, you take another outer garment and put it on top of that 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 garment that you got on that one that you had on gonna be in, uh, inner garment because it's not an outer garment because you can't it can't you can't see it. How did that play? Who you represent? Mm. You wanna take off? Come on, you gotta take something off. You gotta give something away. So. Mm. So do we, do, we, do we want to exchange garments, uh, coats? Or do we want to put on a mountain? Because there's a mountain that come, we got to put on. Being God's people. We have a mountain to put on. So, I don't want to go too far. I think I'm trying to just show you a little bit of the coats. <laughs> Pays a ride, try to go. Yeah. Try to go out in your stuff too. <laughs> hey, but uh, I just want y'all to see that uh, the garments were real important back then because when you seen these people on with this stuff on, with these garments on, you knew who they were. You knew who they were. You knew who they were when they had this, when they had us mounted on. You knew when they had this robe on. You knew who they were. You knew their position. You knew they they were renowned or something. You knew something coming with this robe. When you see this person with his arm. And uh, so, that being said, we have enough time to put on. We have enough time to put on. We say we want to we, we wanna enter into a covenant. We, want, we in a covenant with Christ. Are we really? Are we really in a covenant with Christ? Because Christ said now, the beginning of this covenant, you got to take some off. <laughs> You got to take some off, and you got to put some on. She's my covenant sister. I can't get that. <laughs> <laughs> covenant or not, that's the strong one. I know that. <laughs> oh, I, I, she with me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I get